Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Barbara has often been memed or disregarded a lot, especially with her free 4-star status. This became even more apparent when Kokomi came out as the premium 5-star Hydro Catalyst healer to outshine Mondstadt's beloved idol. But in my opinion, it's exactly because of her accessibility that it's important to still recognize her as a capable unit, especially with the new buffs and roles that have been opened up thanks to Dendro. So, with this quick and updated guide, I want to discuss how new and old players can give Barbara a star comeback. When it comes to Barbara, we have to set some expectations that will also help us understand what makes her newfound value surprisingly good. She is an indefinitely free 4-star unit that players could get early on in the story. She was originally designed to assume a healer support role, likely to help players starting out their journey. Of course, there were hardcore Barbara mains that turned her into a DPS unit, particularly using a vaporized playstyle. And while it was frightening and fun to see showcases of such Barbaras, they require a higher investment and skill level to compare to actual dedicated Hydro DPSs. But now she's found a more optimal role as an offensive unit, while at the same time being easy and simple to build. It's all thanks to Dendro which has given Barbara a comeback. Her consolidation of Hydra application and healing on the team lets her slot relatively well into Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon teams. She's not necessarily going to be the best option in all cases. There's Kokomi who is often seen as a direct upgrade to Barbara, and Barbara's not going to break speedrunning records in Spiral Abyss. However, she can be great in some teams and functional enough in others, which again isn't bad for a free character, especially if you don't have Kokomi. With the right team, Barbara can help clear hard content, and in the overworld, she remains a comfortable unit thanks to her reliable healing. There was some buzz around her back in 3.0 due to a bug where she had an infinite bloom generation mechanic thanks to her skill. It's been fixed now, but that doesn't mean she's unsuitable for bloom teams, because even so, she still has the potential to generate a lot of cores, especially with enemy mobs that you can clump together. Barbara does have some noteworthy cons though. If you're up against cryo enemies, she can self-freeze since her skill applies wet to herself. She also does not have any particle generating mechanics and her skill has one of the longest cooldowns. At C0, it's 32 seconds and at C2, it's 27.2 seconds, which has a particular solution that I'll mention later. But now, let's look at how she fulfills her bloomer role. As a Catalyst user, Barbara has several sources of Hydra application. For off-field application, she has her skill. The main thing to note about her skill is that it's mobile but has a short range which forces you to get within hugging range of enemies in order to apply Hydro on them. Whenever an entity enters the ring, it applies Hydro status. So in practice, Barbara performs her bloom generation role best in multi-target scenarios where new enemies can repeatedly enter her water rings range and generate more and more dendro cores off of them. To maximize her skill's hydro application here, you can paste the contact of her hydro ring with the enemies around you. This generates cores every so often but not so fast that some instances of damage are wasted since enemies can only take up to two instances of bloom damage at a time. Then for on-field application, Barbara has her normal and charged attacks which she can use to apply Hydro more rapidly than just using her skill. Her charged attack applies Hydro in an AoE and has no ICD. Since it has a high stamina cost, you want to be efficient in using it. The best way is to catch a lot of small enemies in its AoE while they have Dendro Auras on them. This will generate many cores simultaneously while generating 4 times the healing than a normal attack would when her skill is active. As for her burst, it's really just an emergency healing measure that doesn't even apply Hydro. As such, there's no need to worry about her ER needs and her burst uptime, which leaves one less stat to worry about. Now, remember that Bloom also has sub-reactions, which Barbara can help facilitate as well, but would use different builds for. So, we'll first cover Barbara as a Bloom trigger, then Barbara as a Hyper Bloom and Burgeon enabler. As a quick recap, Bloom damage scales on the following things. The character level of whoever triggered the reaction, their elemental mastery stat, and enemy resistance. From level 80 to 90, there's a 34% damage increase in bloom reactions, so if you really want to capitalize on a character's bloom damage, that's one stat you should be aiming to max out. So as the bloom trigger, Barbara and her artifacts will want to stack EM. This means a triple EM build plus trying to get EM substats on the feather and flower. For her other substats, you do want some HP to still scale some substantial healing from. 
Getting EM set bonuses from a 4-piece Gilded Dreams or a 2-piece 2-piece EM combo will further boost the bloom damage, but having no set bonuses in the meantime is also perfectly fine. Choose whatever combos give you the best stats. However, you may have some concerns with needing more healing, especially since playing Bloom means potentially enduring a lot of chip damage from the Dendro cores. If that's something you feel you need, you can always stick in an HP main stat piece, a healing bonus circlet, or maybe a two-piece healing bonus set or tenacity for the HP. Obviously, the trade-off is lower reaction damage for more healing. Now let's discuss weapons. There are limited choices, but at least they're fairly accessible to players. Let's start off with her best weapon, which is the Sacrificial Fragments, for two reasons. First is that it gives a very high EM stat. Second, and more importantly, it has a skill cooldown reset that Barbara can actually trigger. It's really easy to overlook this, as new players or those who have never played Barbara before may not be aware of it. Basically, her skill activation deals two droplet damage instances which registers on the sac frag's passive. Those are already two chances to proc the effect. When you're able to hit multiple enemies, that means a higher chance. You want to reset Barbara mainly because her skill cooldown is quite long. When the duration of the skill expires, that's a noticeable amount of time where you remove a source of her hydro application, leading you to have to rely on her basic attacks more. But by getting the skill reset of Sacfrag, it makes your rotation smoother and ensures more consistent hydro application uptime. She'll still function even outside a Sacfrag build, but it does solve one of her biggest issues in this playstyle. With refinements, it's even better. That's why it's the best weapon overall. As long as no one else needs it more, of course. However, while you don't have a Sacfrag copy, the Magic Guide can be your alternative. It gives high EM for a 3-star weapon, the low base attack and passive don't matter, and it will take up a low amount of resources to level up, making it very resource efficient. Those are really your best options already, and one of them is easily attainable from 3-star wishes. There are the Wandering Evenstar and Mappa Mare, though they're much less recommended even versus the 3-star Magic Guide. The Wandering Evenstar is a limited banner weapon which already makes it harder to get and it gives lower EM than the previous options. It gives allies an attack buff, although in reaction teams that's not as significant. The Mappa Mare has a low EM stat and while it has a nice base attack and damage bonus effect, those are irrelevant for a Bloom build Barbara. Building her is straightforward, and her bloom teams are equally so, though there are slight variations in the bloom teams that you can slot Barbara into. Let's first start with a basic bloom team. This scenario will mostly want Barbara on field so she can quickly trigger as many blooms as possible, then pair her with a dendro unit. You have several options for the flex slots. One choice is to go for a double dendro setup to get the dendro resonance and to ensure high uptime on the dendro aura. You can choose an animo unit to offer crowd control, especially since enemies can tend to wander away before the cores explode. The risk of using an animo unit is that if they can swirl hydro or absorb hydro into their animo abilities, they may trigger some blooms. So if you're going with an animo unit, it will preferably be one that also naturally builds high EM so their blooms will also have high damage. A neutral choice is a Geo unit like Zhongli or Albedo. The last option is a Cryo unit that can create a fridge team to offer another form of crowd control. Freezing enemies works well in favor of Barbara since she's being played in very close range and can be quite vulnerable. Cryo application also further encourages Hydro to remain the trigger, and for more details on that, you can check my Kakomi Bloom video. Another role she fills in well is being Nilu's healer support. Since Nilu's team wants a dedicated healer for her bountiful core team, the only viable options right now are Kokomi and Barbara. Kokomi can be a more convenient healer, yes, but Barbara should not be dismissed outright, as she is nonetheless competent and even more accessible as a second Hydra applicator and team healer. In this case, if you're concerned with her more as a healer, then you can give her more HP or healing bonus to work with. Nilu's passive buffs the damage of everyone's bountiful course, so it isn't as necessary to focus building EM on Barbara, but EM will still increase the bloom damage of Barbara's cores. So her build comes down to asking, how well do you want her to heal versus how much damage do you want her to contribute? If you want her to heal more, the build tips later are more applicable. 
But there is a particular way to still use Barbara as the primary bloom trigger in a Nilu team. The technique to guarantee that Barbara owns as many blooms as possible is to only activate the Sword Dance stance of Nilu for the Bountiful Core buff, then switch her out immediately. Then Barbara's combined normal charge attacks and skill will ensure she is the one triggering the blooms. This is a very controlled way to bloom, but at least it makes the bloom damage consistent. Let the show be Animal Test 6308. Swirl, mark, scatter, spring forth. Can't handle your dream. Huh. Huh. Neat. You want this one. Huh? Absorption test. Propagate. I'm a rock. Fall before me. Go, Barbara, go. Huh. Now, while she's found her new bloomer DPS potential, she can also be a cheap and easy to build enabler slash healer slash tank for version and hyper bloom teams. In this case, her main purpose is to create dendro cores for your electro or pyro units to trigger. This means setting up your dendro unit and triggers abilities while keeping her hydro application going by her skill and using on field attacks. In this playstyle, she won't need to build EM since she's not triggering the reaction damage. You can then go for more supportive builds, playing more into her traditional healer support role. For her main stats, the easiest way to build her as a healer tank is with a full HP set, with the circlet potentially being a healing bonus circlet for higher heals. Giving her crits, attack, or hydro damage bonus will increase her raw damage, but since it doesn't add much in a reaction team anyway, it's just easier and more efficient to use a full HP healing build. For sets, first is the Ocean Hued Clam. It gives a good balance of healing while providing a source of AoE physical damage. However, the big caveat is that it shares a domain with the Husk set, which is only meant for certain Geo units. This makes the Clam inefficient to farm if you're not farming for those Geo units at the same time. Thankfully, there's a great alternative support build, which is the Instructor set. If you haven't been doing so, save your Instructor pieces. It's gotten a lot more valuable, especially now thanks to being an amazing set for supporting Dendro reaction teams. The 4-piece effect requires the user to trigger a reaction while on field, and by doing so, it gives your team 120 EM for 8 seconds. That's a huge help to boost your team's reaction damage. If she can trigger reactions frequently on field, you can achieve a near 100% uptime on this effect. While those are the two sets with the best utility, you can otherwise target a full Maiden's Beloved if you incidentally farmed one in the Viridescent Domain, or just go for cheap two-piece combos of healing bonus sets and tenacity for the HP bonus. If you really want the cheapest and functional build, even just any artifacts with HP main stats will do. What about her weapons? I'll mention the sacrificial fragments once again. While I said that EM doesn't matter on her, what makes this still valuable is the skill reset effect. In a team where you'd especially want consistent hydro application, this weapon's passive is very useful. Otherwise, you can go for one of the HP weapons. The prototype Amber and Everlasting Moonglow are for maximum healing utility. The Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers is a cheap but broken 3-star weapon with an HP substat that you should have an R5 copy of. It can be situationally useful if someone in your team can take advantage of the attack buff it gives, like Beidou on a Hyperbloom team. Even if there isn't, it's still a very resource efficient weapon to use on her. Lastly, if your team is energy hungry, then a Favonius Codex is a potential option to make her a part-time team battery as well as a way to generate particles for herself. I've covered these reaction team templates and unit options in previous videos, so I'll just quickly recap them here. For Barbara to apply enough Hydro to create as many blooms as possible, she will still want to take some on-field time, which means ideally, your Electro Hyper Bloom Trigger or Pyro Burgeon Trigger should be able to do their abilities from off-field. Luckily, there are some good options. 
For Burgeon, you would prefer Toma for this. Other units with higher pyro application will run the risk of causing more burning reactions, which isn't ideal to maintain Burgeon. As for the flex slot, it can be tricky. Geo units are quite safe as a neutral element. Animo units are always helpful for crowd control, but they may accidentally swirl and apply pyro. So order the sequence of your abilities to make your animo units absorb hydro instead. Another option is to insert an electro unit that isn't prone to stealing dendro cores. This will help control the amount of pyro on enemies to minimize burning. An electro unit will potentially proc overload which is difficult to play against light enemies, but this is still better for the purposes of generating dendro cores rather than proccing burning. Your top options here will be Fischl for single target and Beidou for multi-target. For Hyperbloom, your Electro Triggers can be Raiden, Yai, Miko, Lisa, and even Kuki, despite being redundant with the healing. Flex slots here can be filled by elements that won't interfere with the reactions or steal Hyperblooms unless it's a high EM Animo unit. There's also the Quick Bloom team type, whose damage is a mix of Quicken Reactions and Hyper Blooms. The main difference here is that Barbara will be mostly off-field to lessen her Hydro application and allow more uptime on Quicken Reactions. Again, Barbara's skill's hug range will force you into close contact with enemies if you want to generate cores to Hyper Bloom, but at least it also means you can be more deliberate with whether or not to maintain Quicken uptime on certain enemies. To wrap up, I just want to emphasize that despite not always being the best option, Barbara is very much still a capable unit in these Dendro team comps. We of course have to level our expectations of her, all things considered. But if you're looking to play and enjoy these Bloom teams despite not owning a lot of Hydro options, Barbara will be more than happy to add that to her roles to perform in. That's going to be all for this guide everyone, let me know in the comments if you're a longtime Barbara player or if this helped introduce you to her potential. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!